Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. I wonder who the bad guy is in this game. I have no idea. As you can tell from the delightfully bloody knife, this is going to be about the murder. And as you can tell from the fact it's versus Jack the Ripper, it's going to be about the particular uh, five murders, I believe it was, uh, that happened in Whitechapel in the 1880s, 90s, end of the 19th century, Victorian England, where a man potentially aristocratic, no one, no one knows his identity, um, went around uh, brutally, mur brutally murdering and... Uh, what's the word beginning with M? Maiming? Maiming. We'll go with maiming. Although I don't think that's right. Um, but uh, ripping apart and uh, taking trophies from various prostitutes in the area. This is going to be fun. Um, and we're going to be playing as Sherlock Holmes. I assume from the Sherlock Holmes versus... Jack the Ripper Oh, that's a magnifying glass, and that's a knife. I saw the knife. I didn't realize that was a magnifying glass. That kind of, those kind of observation skills are really going to help. Let's go. Let's find out what we're going to do. Let's find out who it is. Who do the game think it is? There's loads of people who have been suggested. Let's find out. As we play a new game of Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. In the name of my health and yours, Holmes, stop smoking so much. There is more fog in our apartment than in the street. You are right, Watson, but this evening is never ending and I have nothing to do but make smoke rings. A more amusing pastime would suit better, but my doctor is against it. Perhaps a little tune on the violin. My heart is not in it tonight, Watson. Have you noticed how this cigarette burns? Would you not say it is like a life being consumed? No, it's how a cigarette. How many lives will end tonight in London? How many crimes will be committed within the life of a single cigarette? Ah, the vanity of existence. It is but complaints and smoke, the meager panache of its sickly soul. The tobacco is giving you very somber thoughts. I am certain that this inactivity will not last. Let's retire. You'll be in better humor tomorrow. Reason speaks. Let's to bed. Is this in first person then? I, I don't think the other games. I think the other games were third, weren't they? I can't even remember. Frogwares presents. A new adventure of Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Have an actual historical map. Whitechapel, yeah. Whitechapel done. Thirty first of August eighteen eighty eight. Three twenty AM. Are we at the perspective of Jack? No. Okay. Un unless Jack the Ripper can fly. Come this way, my lovely. We'll have a right good time. Wait, let me help you. Oh, it's my hair that pleases you. In some ways, that's worse not seeing it. Uh, 
That's not nice. Big Street, 1st of September. The news is as dark as the sky, Holmes. An inquest has been opened into the murder of a poor woman in the East End. The unfortunate girl was discovered last night, lying in the street, still warm. The murderer was filled with an incredible savagery. Oh, the article gave me shivers down my spine. The inspectors in charge of the case don't seem to have even the slightest lead. A similar murder took place less than a month ago. Ah, love. A romantic walk, a kiss in the moonlight, a polite refusal, a terrible anger, and a hanging. This area of Whitechapel is a disgrace to London. The government should take serious note of what is going on there. Whitechapel? This woman was found in Whitechapel? Yes, indeed. Bucks Row, to be specific. Then it was not a question of romance, but of commerce. Unless these women actually take pleasure in the vice, the female nature is completely... Holmes, do you hear yourself? A woman is dead under unspeakable circumstances. No less than any other, she was a human and one of Her Majesty's subjects. None of these streetwalkers of which you speak have any other way to survive but by selling their bodies. You know as well as I that our era is not a gentle one, and these women don't have much to look forward to. Some grace, if you would. Do not refuse them your compassion. Do not say another word, my dear Watson. We shall leave immediately for Whitechapel. To the scene of the crime? No, I think it would be better to arrive there a bit later once night has fallen. At the moment, the spot will be overrun by police officers and spectators. It will be impossible to investigate properly. Then where are we going, Holmes? The best thing to do would be to head to the police station and attempt to get a copy of the preliminary reports. But the article in the Star seemed quite complete to me. You must know, Watson, that journalists often draw conclusions from the facts without a proper understanding of how to do this delicate task. We must obtain the reports from the inspector in charge, as well as those from the coroner. Very well, Holmes, but all the same. It seems to me that I have a map of London somewhere, Watson. Can you find it and locate Whitechapel while I get ready? Hmm. You are too kind, Holmes. Searching through your mess? Okay, Koki, so we've got some random things to read through. Please get rid of that. Oh no, I didn't want that. I did not want that at all. Ugh. Third person perspective. Definitely, that's what I want. <clears throat> Let's read this. Special edition, the Whitechapel, Ho Whitechapel Horror, the third crime of a man who must be a maniac. Fairly sure... Wasn't that, weren't that, I thought the third and fourth murders were on the same night. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're going to find out about a fourth. I can't remember. Ugh. I can't remember. I've not played this game before. Words, words, words. Um, I can't remember, but I think the third and fourth murders are on the same night. We may find out that there was a fourth murder on this night with the third. There we go. Uh, women women lured to buy streets to be butchered. The latest victim identified. Opening of the inquest. Oh dear. Great local excitement. The victim of the latest Whitechapel horror, the woman who was found yesterday morning in Books R Row. Surely... Oh, I... What? I don't understand this. I'm confused. I don't know. The, the, the time just seems weird. Because she must have been then left for a day then if it was yesterday morning. Never mind. Completely disemboweled and with her head an early gash from her body was for a time completely unknown. As the news of the murder spread, however, first one woman and then another. Oh, maybe this is the news coming out from yesterday. But then why would there still be police and the spectators? I don't know. Maybe they're still doing stuff over the two days. As the news of the murder spread, however, first one woman and then another came forward to view the body, and at length it was found that a woman, answering the description of the murdered woman, had lodged in a common lodging house, 18 Thrall Street, Spitalfields. Women from that place were fetched, and they identified the deceased as Polly, who had shared a room with three other women in the place on the usual terms of such houses, nightly payment of fourpence each. Each woman having... I don't know why pence was D, it just was. Each woman having... probably Latin. Each woman having a separate bed. It was gathered that the deceased had led the life of an unfortunate, 
while lodging in the house, which was only which was only for about three weeks past. Nothing more was known of her by then, but that but that when she presented herself for her lodging on Thursday night, she was turned away by the deputy because she had not, she had not the money. She was then the worse for drink, but not drunk, and turned away laughing, saying, I'll soon get my DOS money. See what a jolly bonnet I've got now. She was wearing a bonnet which she had not been seen with before and left the lodging house door. A woman of the neighbourhood saw her later, she told the police, even as late as half past two on Friday morning in Whitechapel Road. Late as half past two on Friday morning in what? Oh my goodness. In Whitechapel Road, opposite the church and at the corner of Osborne Street, and at a quarter to four, she was found within 500 yards of the spot, murdered. The people of the lodging house knew her as Polly, but at about half past seven last night, last evening, a woman named Mary Ann, Ann Monk, at, at present an inmate of Lambeth Workhouse, was taken to the bo uh, mortuary and identified the body as that of Mary Ann Nichols, also called Polly Nichols. She knew her, she said, as they were inmates of the Lambeth Workhouse together in April and May last, the deceased having been passed there from another workhouse. On the 12th of May, according to Monk, Nichols left the workhouse to take a situation as servant at Ingleside, Wandsworth Common. It afterwards became known that Nichols betrayed her trust as domestic servant by stealing three pounds from her employer and absconding. From that time, she had been wandering about. Monk met her she said, about six weeks ago, when herself out of the workhouse and drank with her. She was sure the deceased was Polly Nichols, and, having twice viewed the features as the body lay in a shell, maintained her opinion. There is a terribly significant similarity between this ghastly crime and the two mysterious murders of women which had occurred in the same district within the last three months. In each case, the victim had been a woman of abandoned character. Each crime had been committed in the dark hours of the morning, and more important, still, still as pointing to one man, and that man a maniac, being the culprit, each murder has been accompanied by hideous mutilation. That's the word I was thinking of, beginning with M, mutilation. Uh, or mutilating, or some variant thereof. In the second case, that of the woman Martha Turner, it will be remembered that no fewer than 30 stamps were inflicted. The scene of this murder was George Yard, a place appropriately known locally as the Slaughterhouse. As in both other cases, there were, in this, in this not the slightest clue, clue to the murderer. No one was known to have any motive for causing the woman's death. She was parted from her husband and had lived with a man named Turner, but the searching coroner's inquiry revealed nothing connecting either with the crime. It was fancied that some of her many wounds had been caused by a bayonet, and she was said to have been seen with a soldier shortly before her death. Some soldiers were paraded at the tower, and one was said to have been identified by a policeman as having been waiting around George Yard just about the time of the murder. But nothing came of it. The first murder, which, strangely enough, did not rouse much interest, was committed in Osborne Street. The woman in that case was alive when discovered, but unconscious, and she died in the hospital without recovering her senses. Consequently, she was unable to whisper a word to put the police on the track of her fiendish assailant, and her murder has remained a mystery. All three crimes have been committed within a very small radius. Each of the ill-lighted thoroughfares to which the women were, de were decoyed to be foully butchered are off turnings from Whitechapel Road, and all are within half a mile. The fact that these three tragedies have been committed within such a limited area and are so strangely alike in their details is forcing on all minds the conviction that they are the work of some cool, cunning man with a mania for murder. There was no new light thrown on the case this morning. At nine o'clock, the body of the deceased was removed from the mortuary to an improvised operating room on the premises, and Dr. Ralph Llewellyn made a post-mortem examination. The object of the examination was to determine, if possible, the order in which the various cuts were made. It is evident from the cuts in the throat that the head was bent back by the murderer before the knife was used. Whether the other mutilation took place before or after death remains to be settled, and also the position in which the the woman lay when the deed was done. There are several questions of this kind which may throw light on the case, notably the small quantity of blood at the place where she was found and the fact that there must have been much of it somewhere else. At present, clues to the murderer are entirely lacking and the location of the place where the deed was done was the first point necessary to establish. Map. I can't look at the map. Uh, these notes don't contain any new items, they're just extrapolation of what you've said. So we, we can read through things, we have no random, we have no items.
Okay, so we're just moving. We're just clicking. Oh, there's something over there. We're pressing R changes. Oh dear. There's a book. Ah, a map. map of London. At last. Let's see. The district of Whitechapel. Uh, okay, oh, this is just Whitechapel. Oh, that's annoying. I was hoping for like a, a spot. Which which bit of London is Whitechapel? This is Whitechapel. And this is... I think there was... So, if we kind of cut a little block. It's like 48, 47, I think. These areas, this kind of these areas, I think is where the, most of the murders took place. Though I might be horribly wrong. Oh, there's the tower. We've been there. In this game, in, well, not in this game, in uh, uh, Nemesis or Versus Saint Lupin, I've actually been there. It's very nice, very nice tower bridge, very nice to walk across. Um, what was I talking about? Right. Oh, oh, I get it. I meant to actually go there, am I? <laughs> the adventure of the dancing men. I remember it well. Yeah, not the Queen's fun. initials done in bullet holes. Good old homes. Don't think that's actually her initials, but it's, it's Victoria Regina. Holmes is violin. He doesn't play nearly enough, if you ask me. Mm. Treaty on Cornish, the Celtic dialect of Cornwall. And here, medieval pottery. How can Holmes possibly read such things? I know, they sound fun. What are you talking about? This is the coal bucket in which Holmes keeps his cigars. What a funny idea. Yes. Right, well, I think if we map... Just head to Whitechapel then. Okay, there's the police station. So I assume this is just marked out as the various areas we can go to within Whitechapel. I found the map, Holmes, and I was able to locate the Whitechapel police station. Hooray. Congratulations, Watson. Come, the game is afoot. You can read the article to me on the way. I really hope he doesn't, because I've just read it. Oh, good. We have arrived, Watson, in Whitechapel. Not very bright. And what cold! Brr, a typical London morning. Come, Watson, let's find this police station. There it is. I found it. Take the rubbish. Well, this station isn't very well kept, I say. Mm. It's a local outpost, Watson. The daily tasks that confront these constables are not the easiest, and they are poorly paid. 